at this story with us this morning. And I want to read a story in the Bible. I have a different message on this subject, actually. Um, but this is a little, hit it from a little different slant, maybe, than I have before this morning. And it's the story of the prodigal son. That's what it came to be known as. And this is an amazing story. As a matter of fact, no writers of literature in the world have ever been able to say as much in so few words as these parables of the Lord Jesus Christ. No nor normal man can't touch this stuff, can't come near it how the Lord did. These few little verses here about a boy who rebels against his family and runs off and wastes all his money and then comes back home is a short, they call it the prince of parables is what this is called. It's a perfect story. There's so much about life and human nature in so few words. It would take a normal person, a book that thick, to write all the things that this story hit. It talks about love, life, family, parenting, rebellion, waste, sin, jealousy, self-righteousness, and forgiveness, all in a few short verses. Amazing. That's one of the reasons I know the Bible is a supernatural book. How could it say all of that in just so few words? Let's look at it. Uh, Luke chapter 15 and verse 11. A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father. Now look at that. You might know it'd be that younger one, wouldn't you? I mean, how many times I heard people say, boy, I tell you what, we never had a bit of trouble with our firstborn. He done everything. But boy, when that next time come along. Uh, and, and you try to raise them the same way and it don't work. Uh, what works with one don't work with the other. You have 15 that don't work with none of them the same way. That's right. And uh, I've got three here and four more here somewhere. Well, one of them sick. Uh, so seven them all together and you can't always raise a kid the same. What, what, the way you say something to one don't, and I'm not talking about major things, but you know what I mean. Look here what he said. The younger said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. I don't want to wait till you die. I want my inheritance right now. And he divided his daddy unto them his living. Not many days after. He'd been watching videos, been on his phone, been on YouTube at night. Had the t he'd been on talking to people way off. Somehow or another, these kids think if they talk to somebody that lives away off, they're brilliant and smarter than everybody at home. But they're probably as dumb or dumber than them you're, you're living with. Most time dumber. And he said he took his journey. And the younger, not many days after, the younger son gathered all together. He packed everything he had in that little duffel bag and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. Me and you would say he went and partied and blew all his money. Verse 14, And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. So he's this big party boy out partying with the Cartrashians and, and, and Paris Hilton and Brittany and all of them, and now he had to go get a job feeding hogs for a living. That's what happens. All them guys go to make it big in Hollywood. Uh, one, uh, Ten million of them wind up feeding hogs. Ain't that right? I know, hold your finger there. I know some boys marrying one time years ago. They got up and they saw, man, we're going to Hollywood. And everybody, thought, yeah, you about half crazy too. And they took all the money they had and they went to Los Angeles. And about three weeks later, they come back and they nearly starved to death. And they said they lived off potted meat and crackers for two weeks out there. So they spent all their money and they couldn't get a job. It wasn't as great as they thought it was out there. You know, somebody said the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. You know where the grass is greener? Over top of the septic tank. That's what California is. Amen, Brother Danny. I'm just reading my scripture. I'll preach in a minute. That's right. And so uh, 
they, uh, a famine came. Verse 16, and he would fain, old English, have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. That's important. Where's all his buddies? Where's all them party people? I, when the money's gone, they're gone. And when he came to himself, that's extremely important. Psychiatrists, every psychiatrist in America needs to study that. They need to study that at UNC Greenville and UNC Greensboro and Chapel Hill and Raleigh. And they need to study that. Uh, those people are, are slack in their education. They're limited, limited knowledge. He came to himself. You know what that means? He was temporarily out of his right mind. When a person's out here wasting their life in sin, they're temporarily insane. Insanity. Right? He came to himself. He woke up and he said, I, will, I know what I'm going to do. How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father. Now he's thinking right. And will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was a great, yet a great way off, his father saw him. That'll preach there, boy. His father saw him. <whistles> Hold him, mercy. I'm glad the Lord saw me that night I came. Lord looked down and he saw old Danny coming down the aisle. He saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto the father, unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe. Put him on probation for six months. Mm -mm. Put it on him. Put a ring on his hand. Put shoes on his feet. Bring hither the fatted calf. We're going to eat steak and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they begin to be merry. I'd like to preach for a little, a few minutes this morning on the subject, why the prodigal son wanted to come home. He came to himself. This old boy, like a lot of young people, and some in their 30s and 40s, got a wild hair one day and said, you know what, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of living at my daddy's house, going by all these rules. I, I think I want to go out there and live that life that I see on YouTube. I want to go out there and party. Those people out there are cool. I met this person and they live way, way, way off, but they're so smart. And they told me if I'd come there, I could find a job. And he does. He goes and tells his daddy, he said, uh, look, uh, you care if, I mean, I know when you die, you're going to give us boys something, but is it all right with you if I go ahead and get mine now? Lord, you liable to live, I mean, no telling how old. And so let me have mine now. And daddy said, all right, nothing else to do you. Uh, he said, now your brother's going to wind up getting more. You know that. I don't care. Just give me the cash. I want the cash right now. And so his daddy gives him the cash. You know the story. He, he, he goes down there, and by the first thing he does, what is the first thing a dumb boy does when he gets a lot of money? He goes down at the brand new camel lot uh, downtown uh, where they sell them brand new ones just come off the assembly line. No, he didn't want one with 20,000 miles on it, $10,000 cheaper. He had to buy a brand new one. Remind anybody of anybody? Amen. Got to have that brand new one. Uh, you know, did you know that nobody owns a new car? Nobody. The second you drive it off the lot, it's used. <laughs> and you can take it back the next day and it's over $3,000 less. If you, you might not have drove it 50 miles. But anyway, he went down there and he said, uh, 
Uh, I like that one there. And they said, well, now, it don't get too good of a water mileage. Uh, you have to put 10 gallons of water in these things every time you, uh, every, uh, 200, 250 miles. He said, I don't care. I like it. I like them wheels. I like them. Uh, I know, I, and, and he said, I like, oh, my goodness, it's got tinted uh, thing over his, over his eyelids. And uh, uh, he's got a do-rag tied around, the, around his ears. That means I'll party when you see that. Hanging over there on the, on the rear view mirror. And he said, oh, it's that sound system. He got to click some heel like that, you know. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Don't put that on YouTube or on Facebook. I'll kill you. Uh, 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 but he goes down there yeah, and he said, I like that sound system. That way they can, they can hear you about the time they smell you. They can. I've seen a few like that. You can smell them half a block away and hear them two blocks away. Uh, and he come off and he took off on that brand new camel. And boy, when he come riding into town in that thing, before he got to town, he stopped and washed it. Uh, he put armor all all, uh, all on them hooves, and he shined that baby up and had that thing on there. So here he comes. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. He done went and bought him all new designer clothes. Uh, he had him on a, uh, he had the pumped up kicks, you know. He had uh, them $200, t- pay no attention to this man behind the curtain. Uh, uh, he, he just works here. Uh, he said uh, uh, he uh, had, these, had these $200 tennis shoes on him, KDs, uh, you know, and, and he was going through there. And he was, oh, my goodness. Uh, he done went and got him a perm, and he put about a half a gallon of cologne on, and here he come into town, and every little old buck tooth girl in town uh, uh, looked at him, you know. They didn't have but two or three girls in that town. Uh, he went on the next, and uh, there's uh, that one girl so buck tooth, she could eat an apple through a chain link fence. Uh, but anyway, uh, they, and they said that one little old boy, he used to hump back when he tried to go in the house. He ran up under the porch, uh, but that's what they had. But anyway, the girl said, oh, Woo, he's cute. Did you see him? What's his name? name and you know it wasn't long he made friends I mean you go in there on a brand new camel and sit down and buy everybody's drinks you're going to make a bunch of friends real quick ain't you I mean they listen people all you kids listen to me there's always a bunch of them out there ready to take you in you got money you got something to give you have your virginity you have your fun you have a car they're ready to take you in He didn't realize it. Something about partying. You spend more money than you realize you're spending. He took his debit card down there one day and laid it down. I was going to do it. And they said, sorry, this card's been rejected. He said, wait a minute. There's got to be a mistake. Uh, Check my account. The lady behind there said, sorry, sir. You ain't got no money. He said, well, that's impossible. I had all you know, so I, you know well, look at here. Hear it out. Joe's Tavern, May the 18th, Friendly Tavern, Puking Dog, that, that, right there. There's all these places you've been. Uh, you've been there? You've been there? $846. I don't know what you did that night, but it must have been a lot of fun. Uh, $1,236. Here, here's at the mall. Uh, $848, clothes, you didn't have enough sense to go to the dead man store. Uh, you had to go buy everything brand new in the mall, pay full price. And, uh, and guess what, big boy? You broke. And he went around thinking, Ugh. So he then comes riding down one day with a for sale sign hanging around that camel's neck. <laughs> And parked it out there all day, left it with the four cells. I had to sell that thing. And then next thing you know, he was on the trolley riding back and forth to town looking for a job. And the only job he could find was feeding hogs in a hog lot, feeding them with, and he's so hungry that he wanted, we ain't got nothing in here to do with They're out front. He wanted a husk that the swine did eat. Now look, I've been hungry before. And I fasted before we got hungry. And I've been without before and got hungry. I ain't never wanted to pull a corn stalk off and eat the husk off a corn stalk. That boy was starving. And he, like, you know what me and you call that? 
he hit bottom. When he hit bottom, he suddenly woke up. And I'm going to tell you something here tonight. You kids sitting in here, or this morning, I'm going to tell you this morning, kids, you sitting in here today, you think, my parents are crazy. They're so dumb. All these stupid who go to church every Sunday. I know better than that. I'm going to get out. I'm going to taste. I'm not stupid. I'm only going to go so far. But I'm going I'm to tell you something this morning. You can't play with sin. Sin will bite you. Sin will deceive you. It'll get you in a bigger mess. You'll get in over your head real quick. You start flirting around with sin. It won't be long till you'll be in over your head. And then you'll be in where you can't get out. And the Bible said he began to be in want. And one day he's sitting in there starving to death. And his belly was hurting. He had mud all over him. Pigs slop on him and everything. And something went, ding. He said, back at my daddy's house, there's people that work for my daddy better off than I am. He's got servants living a better life than this. They got a nice warm bed. They got three meals a day. They have other to take care of. I'm, I'm messed up. I don't know what I'm going to do. First thing in the morning, I'm getting up, I'm headed home, and I'm going to my father, and I'm going to get right. And see if my daddy he might not even have me back, but I'm going home. I don't know who I'm talking to here this morning. I don't know who in here is hearing this message or who will hear it, who's hearing it online or whatever. But I'm telling you, I guarantee you, there's people sitting in this church this morning. Your heart is so cold. You're so far away from God. It's been a long time since you even felt anything. You begin to question whether there is a God or not you start asking yourself I don't even know if it's even true you're so far away I've got something to tell you today you need to go back to your father you need to go back to your father that was his first thing he needed his father he had rebelled against him his daddy's authority wasn't so bad after all at least at his father's house he had a bed to sleep in I imagine he said Good night, I'm going to make a bed out of these corn stalks, sleeping in this man's barn, getting up everybody feeding these stupid pigs all day. My daddy, good night, I remember the servants' quarters. They had their own bed. They had their own food. They're not as bad off as I am. I, he needed his father. Then I'll say second, he needed his family. He needed his family. He had a great family and home life back home. Can I say something to all y'all? If you're between 12 and 20 this, this morning, can I say something to you? You need your family. You think you don't, but you need your family. God fixed it so a man and woman and kid, the family unit is ordained by God Almighty. That's why the, the, the liberal uh, people out there in the world want to destroy the family. They're against the family. The news media is against the family. The world's philosophy is against the family. They, it's like Hillary said, they want a village to raise a kid. God ordained a man and a woman and a family. And you may think, oh, my mom and daddy are so dumb. And they are so behind. And they are so out of touch with reality. I know people right now, it breaks my heart. I'm telling you, I could hit this altar right now and pray for them. I'm telling you right now that they, and they said, I don't need my family. They're always fussing at me. They're always trying to tell me what to do. I just go with my friends. My friends, they know everything. My friends know everything. Now, I'm going to tell you the day's going to come, young lady. The day's going to come when you'll wish your mama was hug hugging you. You're going to wish you had your bed. You're going to wish you could go back to your couch. You're going to wish you could sleep in the comfort of your home. He needed his family. I heard about a boy up in McGill University. That's in Montreal, Canada. And two boys, two brothers years ago went to this university to get an education in law. Thomas and William Stewart. Thomas was injured. He got something happened to his eye and um, he, he got in an accident and hurt his eye. True story. And they said, uh, he went to the doctor, and somehow the doctors said, they said, uh, look, you've, you've done something terrible here. And said, we're going to have to do surgery on you and uh, remove that eye, or you could possibly lose sight in the other one. So they set up a time to agree to have the surgery, and that boy went and had that surgery done. Somehow or another, they had a doctor in there that, 
was confused, made a mistake, and took the other eye, took his good eye out. And took the guy's good eye out, so that left him blind in both eyes. But the boy continued and wanted his education. And he continued, and his brother, William, sat down with him and read the textbooks and went through the lessons with him and walked him through it and got him through all that stuff. And his brother and that boy who was blind graduated at the top of his class. His brother was second. And everybody talked about how that boy's brother gave up him. I mean, helped him get around, helped him walk around campus. Helped, you know who will do that for you? Your family. I'm going to tell you something today. Listen, that crowd out there may welcome you at first. They may say, come on, let's party. But the day will come when you're down, you're broke, you're sick, you're in the hospital. Do you know who will be there? Your family will. Your mama and your daddy and your brothers and your sisters. My sister Debbie is not here this morning. Listen, through some of the hardest times I've ever had in my life, and I've had a few. Debbie was always right there. She'd call me and she'd say, Now, Danny, you just hang in there. You just, and she brought me money. I couldn't tell you the time. And I mean, I was broke, didn't have nothing. And she, she didn't need anything fixed at your house. And I, you know why? She's my family. My mom would have gave me, my daddy would have gave me the last dime he had. And I'd do the same for my girls today here. I'm telling you, he needed his family, and you need your family. You need your mom and dad. You say, well, they get on my nerves. Well, you get on theirs too, you little darling. Don't worry about it. You go out there and party, them big people out there, you're going to get on their nerves too. As soon as you're broke, they're going to throw you out. Remember about this girl, she didn't like her daddy's rules because her daddy was always fussing at her, telling her, do this, do that. And, and she would, didn't dress right. And he said, you know, you need to cover up if you're going out in public. And, and she said, oh, ah. Oh. So she just bucked. Too much makeup. You know, she went and shacked up with her boyfriend. Somebody saw her downtown. She don't dress down there, no makeup. Said, my goodness, boy, you sure changed. She said, well, he don't want me to wear it. Her boyfriend was meaner to her, had more beliefs than her daddy did. Afraid, afraid that she might smile at somebody and they might steal her away from him. A little insecure brat. And, and listen, they, she, he said, listen, that's the way the world does. They say, come and we'll give you all this freedom. Well, guess what? There's more bondage out there than there are at your home where you are. You got more freedom. Like I, I, had, this, I had a dog at home years ago, an old dog. We'd keep that thing, try to keep it up. And boy, that, you know how a dog will do. They'll jump up on the fence. They want out so bad they can't stand it. But you know why you don't let them out? They'll get run over. They'll get in a fight and get their ears chewed off by the dog down the road. You know, you know what? You're doing it for their good. Now they can run around all they want to in this little spot right here. And that's the way God is. God sets boundaries. The Lord sets boundaries. And he says, stay within them boundaries. You can run around and have all the fun you want. But if you get outside them boundaries now, something will eat you up. It'll eat you up. This world will eat you up. He needed his family. And then he needed his friends. Friends that love you. Listen, they say that the average person, when they die, can count their real friends on one hand. That's, and, that's, that's, and you know how you know who your friends are? When everything goes bad and you ain't got nothing and you can't give them nothing and you can't have, and it's not even popular to hang around you, your friends will show up. And if you've got five people in this world that would be there with you and for you no matter what, I don't care if you messed up. I don't care if you've done something stupid. I don't care. They'll be right there and they'll say, look, I ain't here to judge you. I'm here to help you get through this. I'm here to be here with you. If you got somebody like that, you better thank God. And that old boy had needed his friends. He needed his friends, friends that'll love him, friends that'll lift him, friends that'll long with him and pray with him. And uh, the Bible, You say, oh, well, Brother Danny, I, I don't even want to go around my friends no more because they're talking. The Bible says, faithful are the wounds of a friend. 
faithful are the wounds of a friend. When, when you're doing wrong and you got a friend that says, look, I'm not trying to be ugly or nothing, but I'm worried about you. I'm concerned about you. The direction you're going is wrong. You're going down the wrong road. Oh, don't start preaching to me. Oh, that, that's, I heard that all my life. You ought to thank God you've got somebody that cares enough about you to tell you what's right and what's wrong. He needed his friends. And all that, he needed his food. He needed his food. Plenty of food back at the Father's house. It's prepared right back at the Father's house. He had a place at the table back at the Father's house. Now think about this. It's getting Christmas. He's sitting down there saying, corn stalks for breakfast. Not corn flakes, corn stalks, brother. <laughs> no milk, no sugar, no bananas, no honey. I mean corn stalks. And then he starts thinking. Back home, Hopsine would cook every evening. I always imagine that like it was bananas or something. He, and he was being caught right, son. <laughs> Some of you kids don't know who Hopsine is. You ain't got no sense. I'm seeing him bring it out. And he had it on the, he'd set it on the table. And he'd set down them big biscuits, they call them cat head biscuits. Real big, that big. Oh my Lord. Smoke would be coming up off of them. Have the Christmas decorations around. There's them, have them covered up with a, with a, with a cloth. And pull that cloth back and smoke just out them big old, listen, you can make a meal just out of them. If you've never eaten no homemade biscuits, real biscuits, not them hypocrite biscuits, you pop out, bang, like that. Them ain't real. Real biscuits. Hopsin made gravy. Real gravy. You're up, people from up north, down there, bless their hearts. They have no idea. Real gravy with flour and grease, bacon grease. And they had liver must too, bless God. You know, around here in Marion Morgan, is the only place in the world you can get real liver mush. You know that, right? That's God's hand on our part of the world. That's why they had real liver mush. Amen. Everybody, everywhere I go, they say, liver mush, what's that? They say, what's in it? I said, well, we won't talk about that. <laughs> That's like Billy Kelly said. He said, when we were growing up, we eat everything on the hog but the squeal. It's lips and tongues and eyeballs and gums and stuff. Well, I mean, if you can eat his hind leg, you can eat his gums, I reckon. But anyway, he needed his food, biscuits, gravy, eggs, grits. Girls raised in the South, you know. <laughs> that's, that's right, brother. Real grits. Butter. Hot, right out of the oven. Just like Miss Karen makes. Just like Lorreen makes. Like some of you like, Lord, they, I'm, I'll tell you what, why don't we just call this off right now and we'll go to Steakhouse. I, we'll finish this next week. Hey, man, I'm starving to death. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, listen, I'll tell you, they put it on, he got, he got thinking, oh, my goodness. Corn stalks, biscuits and liver mush and ham. Listen, my girls took the liver mush to school half their life for lunch. You can make cheese, sa- liver mush cheese sandwich. You can put it in eggs. It's got more flavor than steak. It does. And he got to look at me and he said, I want my food. And I want to say this morning, the devil's got all kind of junk out there to offer you. The devil's got old stuff. But I'm going to tell you, it, it, it gets stale really quick. Listen, listen to me. If you're really saved, I mean, if you've ever really got it just right, I mean, if you've ever been hooked up, know you're right with God, filled with God's power, and fed off real preaching from this Bible, you can go out there in this world and eat that junk, and the first thing you know, you're going to say, this ain't really 
I mean, you're ruined, buddy. You're ruined. The world don't make nothing like what we got in here this morning. No, I'm telling you, brother, you can't get this out in the world. We got something in here today that the world can't give and the world can't cook. Brother, if you've ever tasted the real thing, nothing will satisfy you till you get old again. That's why, that's why we have people drive a long ways here to church, brother. I'd rather drive 50 miles and get full than five miles and get fooled. Amen. Lord, I'd rather drive 50 miles for biscuits and gravy uh, than I had, I had for a cold tater. Uh, uh, what do you call them things? Pop tart. I say tater tarts. He missed his food. He missed his food. I ain't, I ain't never been out of church uh, since I've been saved. I'm not saying I've been, I mean, I've, I've messed up and failed the Lord a million times. I'm not saying I'm good or nothing. I'm just saying I've never been out of church. But I've heard a lot of people that have. And I've, heard, I've had people call me and say, Brother Danny, I miss you preaching. I miss you preaching. I miss you preaching. They miss their food. You know what I'm doing this morning? I'm serving it out here on this table. And if you ever get a good taste of it, just right. If you ever digest that and it gets down in you just right, the things of this world ain't never going to satisfy you. You might as well forget it. You're marked. You've got, you've got, you done found out where the food is. And I'm telling you today, he missed his food. I'll tell you something else, he missed his finances. He sure did. He missed his finances. All his money is gone. Out there in the world, when your fun, money's gone, your fun's gone. You have to pay for it. In here, you can be broke as a convict and have just as good time as a millionaire sitting right beside you. Yes, sir, brother. Hear about that boy? You know, everybody's heard that little story. Sorry. Boy wrote home from college. He said, Dear Dad, no mun, no fun. Send some, your son. <laughs> if you ever get a letter, that's what it is, begging for money. Dad wrote back and said, Dear lad, too bad, so sad, your dad. <laughs> he got out there that day and he said, uh, Man, I ain't got no money. I can't even go to McDonald's. <sighs> I can't even buy a pair of socks. I mean, I, I shopped at Dillard's and the Tommy Hilfiger store, and now I'd go to, to the Goodwill, some flea market. Buying everything. And I've done wore them out. Missed his finances. Daddy had, you know, to be so dumb and crazy, mom and daddy sure do have a way of keeping them bills paid and that roof over your head, don't they? Isn't it amazing how they've always got food on your table as dumb as they are? <laughs> Listen, when you your kids are in for a shock of your life when you get out there and you say, oh my goodness. We have to pay for electricity? Yes. Every month. And if you don't, they'll cut it off. He got his power cut off. Got thrown out of his apartment. But listen, this world ain't your friend. You ain't nothing special. They're not going to say, oh, we're going to give you electricity every month. You got to get out there and bust it, buddy. Pay them bills. Mom and daddy got away getting food on that table, ain't they? Crazy old mom and daddy ain't got no sin. But they've kept food on that table and clothes on your back all these years. He missed it. He found it. And then I will say it quickly and I'm through. He needed forgiveness. He had to have it. That guilty feeling kept bothering him. I don't know if you've ever had to live like this, but if you're backslid, here's the way you got to live. Every time the phone rings, you think, uh-oh, that's that guy I owe money for drugs. That's her husband. That's his wife. Call. Oh, oh, I'm scared. I'm scared. Every time a cop gives you time, oh, God. And, and you're trying the best to go straight, and you're, you, I do that, and I ain't even doing nothing wrong. I ain't got no drugs in the car. And every time a car gets tough, calls me behind me, I'll start I've been pulled over for being drunk two or three times. Two times I know of. I was, I was looking at a map in Florida trying to figure out where I was going. I had my map over here, and I was figuring out. The cop pulled me over. He said, Mr. Castle, you've been drinking. 
I said, no, sure ain't. I ain't never drunk in my life. And then one time up here somewhere, the cop said he'd been drinking, but I was busy. Can't draw a straight line doing all that other stuff. But Tad, he, he got to thinking about that. He got to thinking. And he started thinking, my daddy, my daddy, I don't know if he'll forgive me or not. I don't know if he'll forgive me or not. So he started, I, I, somebody said, where are you going? He said, you know that big old ponderosa up yonder, that big big old log mansion on top of that hill? That's where I'm going. I'm little Joe. <laughs> and uh, Hoss and Adam was up there living it up. And I'm out here full of the devil. And I'm going home. And he done sold his hat and his boots and everything else. He's walking up through there. had hog vomit and mud all over him. And they said, you're going up there looking like that? Man, you better go save you up some money and buy you a nice suit of clothes before you go up there in that big house. That man's rich. That's, yeah, they own half this country. They own thousands of acres. They got cattle and, and stuff everywhere. And he said, uh, I ain't got no money. I can't. I know I'm a mess. My hair ain't been washed in weeks, and I got mud all over me. He said, I'm just going just as I am. I don't know if he'll have me like this or not. Daddy might, he, just, he can put me out in the barn. I don't care. If he'll just let me sleep in the barn, I'll be out. Listen, you, you know you're getting ready to get right. There's hope for you. They's, you're getting ready to get right. When you hit bottom and you realize, hey, Lord, I'm willing to be a hired servant. I don't want nothing special. Listen, I know people make bargains with God and say, now, now if God do this, I'd come to, no, no, no. You say, God, I don't care if you put me out in the barn. I don't care if you ever answer another prayer. God, I just need forgiveness. Get this sin out of me. Get this sin off of me. Get it off of me. Get it off of me. You get like that, you fixing to get hell. So he comes. They're in the house getting supper ready. Ben's out on the front porch smoking a pipe. No, he ain't. No, he ain't. He don't smoke. He ain't. Somebody said, who's that? And he looked a long way out there. He got his binoculars and looked. And sure enough, there was this boy. Lord in mercy, what a story. Man, we could make a play out of that, couldn't we? If I had the time and the props and the people, Lord in mercy, man, I'd have him coming up through there and music playing and him just a dragon like this, you know. Maybe he got hurt and oh, crippled a little bit and coming up like that right there. And, and some of the servants out there say, man, your daddy ain't going to say that. You get out of here. You, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You, you've been out living like a devil. We ain't got Come not thou near unto the, us, for we are holier than thou. You know, and I, and He comes walking through there like this, and about that time his father sees him. He said, I don't even going to look. I don't know if daddy will even have me. I guess I'll go out in the wilderness and starve to death. He won't let me back in. And his daddy looks up, and he stands up like this, and that boy's scared to death. And his daddy comes off of the porch like that, and he says, oh, no, oh, no. He's going to tell me to stay off the property. He's going to tell me to stay off the property. But about that time, daddy comes down like this with his arms open like that right there and he's had a smile he's like, hey my boy they ain't a daddy in here don't understand that right there ain't a mom in here but if I was my boy if I was my boy heck with what all the Baptists say heck with what all the Pharisees say that's my boy that's my boy and I'd head for him like that and he grabbed him like that and fell on his neck it didn't matter if he got a, 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 a hog, hog, hog slop on him or whatever he hugged him and that boy's heart jumped and turned a flip and brother they had a hallelujah time he said hot team bring them steaks out of the refrigerator put the baked potatoes in the microwave he said we're going to have a feast my boys come back my boys come back and brother they had a great time he come back home I say to you this morning I'm through that's the way God feels about you this morning loves you he cares about you there's people sitting in this room here today. You used to be right in there on fire, right with God. But you've gone off. The devil's tricked you. We all know it. You know it. The Lord knows it. The devil knows it. You know it. And you've got messed up. And my news for you today is he come home. And his daddy fixed everything up.
And as long as you want to enjoy the slop out there of this world, you ain't never going to get help. But one of these days, you're going to get sick of that. And when you do, that's when you'll come home. Some of you, your problem of you ain't got bit just right yet. You still think it's cool to be out there and sinning a little bit, don't you? You don't want to quit what you're doing wrong. There ain't no hope for you till you're tired of it. You come to yourself. Come to the Lord. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Every head bowed. Every eye closed here today. Nobody's talking. Nobody's moving. Simply bow your head. Pray this morning. The invitation this morning is for people here this morning that have been saved. You know you've been saved. Deep, deep down inside, something says he's talking to you. He's talking to you. The Holy Spirit is talking to you. We're going to pray. We're not going to drag out a long invitation. We're going to sing. If God spoke to your heart this morning, get out of your seat. Get down here and make it right. And leave here today with the Father's blessings on your life again. Heavenly Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, come down. Lord, there's a prodigal son here today, prodigal daughter here today. Please, help them to make that step. Come down here this morning and make things right. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Come on, come on. Come pray with these folks, y'all. Somebody come and pray. Jesus is tenderly calling. Come on. Somebody pray to this lady coming here. Ladies, need some ladies come pray over here. Calling today. Amen. 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 Come on. Come on. Just get out of your seat. Come right now. And farther away. Y'all sing. Help him now. Call. Amen. Pray this man over here. Amen. Calling today. Say, Jesus is calling. The Lord's calling you today. He's calling you today. Amen. Jesus is calling. Amen. Hey, you need to come home to the Father this morning. Come on. Come on right now. Come on right now. Calling today. Yes, amen. Bring him thy burden. Amen. And thou shalt be blessed. Amen. He will not turn thee away. Sing now. Calling today. Say it now. Calling today. Jesus is called. One more while these are praying now. Jesus is it you? Is that heart beating right there? Is it you he's talking to today? today. Amen. Waiting Amen. Today. Thank God. Thank God. With thy Thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. Come and no longer delay. Everybody. praying this morning while she plays softly once you've been saved and you've tasted of the real thing there's nothing out there in this world that will ever satisfy you you can try it it might be fun for a while but it don't last he had fun there for a little while but he didn't by the way that's one way you know you're saved when you get out and do wrong, everything just blows up in your face. That's a good sign you're saved right there. You can't do it. God ain't going to let you live that kind of life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. Get my mic on here, brother. Amen. Amen. Well.
I hope everything's right. You made things right this morning. All hearts clear. All right. We're going to let you go in just a minute for...